Hello, this is Farish. We're going to set up Ruby on Rails on Windows 10 today. Uh, part of the reason why I wanted to do this video was A, for new developers who don't have access to a Mac or feels that setting up a virtual machine might be too difficult, especially in the beginning stages. Second, uh, the other reason why I did this video is for people like me who want to try something different, who may end up getting a service book uh, even though they've been using OS X for quite some time. So let's start. As of this video, I am running Windows 10 version 1703. This may work on earlier versions of Windows 10, but you should have the latest version of Windows 10 set up and installed and updated when you do something like this. So to begin with, we need to go into settings. We can just type this right here. And what we have to do is go into update and security. Let me full screen this for developers. And we need to enable developer mode. This is going to download a package. It takes about 20, 30 seconds to install. And once this is done, we're going to be able to install the Linux subsystem. So now I'm going to close this out. OK, and now I'm going to go into the control panel. And what we need to here go is into programs. And right here, it says turn Windows features on and off. Going to go scroll towards the bottom. You're going to see Windows subsystem for Linux beta. Check that off. It's going to apply some changes and ask you to restart your computer. Uh, so once you hit that, this takes maybe a couple minutes. It all depends on your system. And then we'll get to the next step. OK, so now what we're going to do, this is finish restarting. Uh, we're going to install bash. So we type in bash. And this window is going to pop up. Uh, one thing to note, there's a lot of you're going to install this, restart or wait, install this, wait. There's a lot of that going on. Even though this video might end up being 10, 15 minutes long when it's all said and done, uh, this process can actually take you an hour, hour and a half. So we're going to hit Y for yes and hit enter. And this is going to download. And as soon as it finishes, we'll go to the next step. OK, so this is finished installing Bash. But now I have to enter my Unix name, which will be Farish and my password, which is none of your business. And this is done. I'm just going to exit out of this. And I'm going to type bash in again. And what you're going to see is bash on Ubuntu on Windows. And what I'm going to do next is start the process of installing Ruby. First, I need to update the Linux environment. So let's do sudo app get update and all this will be in the description. Put in my sudo password. And when this is finished downloading, we'll return. This one's going to be quick. The second one where I install all the libraries is going to take longer. Oh, this was much quicker than I expected. So let's go ahead and put in the next command. And this is a long one. Uh, I have this one line that I copy and paste so I don't have to think about it. Like I said, I will definitely put this for you in the descriptions. Um, hit enter. I'm going to hit yes. This part's going to take a while. When this is done, I'll return back to the video. So this has finished installing. So now we're going to do rbev and get this going. Uh, after this finished downloading, I have some shell commands that I need to type in for the bash profile. Um, like I said before, all these commands will be in the description, show notes, whatever you want to call it. That way you don't have to think about it. Honestly, once you get to a point you just do this. I'm still continuing copying and pasting these commands. 
Uh, part of it is two parts for RBEV. One is the actual program itself. The other is the Ruby build environment. Um, and there's... multiple commands you have to type but this is about done and now I should be able to just install Ruby this can take some time so once again I'm gonna pause the screencast okay and welcome back uh, so this just finished installing uh, Ruby and it took about 30 minutes for the download to happen so just fair warning that just because it's taking 10, 15 minutes, it might take longer. Uh, I've heard that it could take up to an hour, depending. Uh, next thing we're going to do is set this Ruby as the global. Let's make sure I spell it right. And then we should be able to do Ruby V and C. What we got ruby 2.4.0 uh, let me move this over a little bit let me make this a little larger if it lets me no it does not that stinks um next thing we need to do is install the bundler gem install bundler and this is prepping everything for ruby on rails And I will get back to this after this is done. Alrighty, Bundler has finished installing. And what we need to do first is run RBEV rehash. And now, because we are going to do uh, Ruby on Rails with the asset pipeline, and especially with the changes coming up with Rails 5.1, we're going to set up Node.js. Now, this command I'm going to put in is for Node.js version 6, which is what I'm using on my other projects right now. I believe they are on Node.js 7, but I'm using what I prefer. And you can use 4 or... Uh, I don't even know if you can use 2 or 0.1, but I've seen some people use 4. I'm working 6 because I do some React application so that's what i'm gonna stick with uh now that this is finished you're gonna notice it even tells you what command to type in next we're just going to use this command right here with one slight change what we're going to do is app get install dash y because i don't want to answer a bunch of questions um no js Let's do sudo then. App get install uh, dash y node.js. And this part also takes a little while. So as soon as this is finished, we'll get back to it. Okay, Node.js has finished installing. So next up, we're going to run our memory hash. I don't think I had to do that yet. We're going to do gems, uh, gem install rails version 5.01. And this is going to download the rails gem. And then once this is done, we'll get back to this again. But it's a lot of... Do a command, wait till finish, do a command, wait till finish. Uh, I, I didn't track the whole process, but I figured it's going to take you probably a, a hour to an hour and a half at least. So just fair warning, this does take some time. Okay, Rails is finished installing. This took about another 20, 25 minutes. Uh, that's downloading... Uh, all the documentation also for the gem i probably could have shortcut it and i should have but that's fine um so right one more time i'm going to run 
our BAMF rehash. And then I'm going to go to Rails V. And you can see Rails 5.0.1. And finally, we're going to do the final test. I'm going to do Rails new my app. Okay, Rails has finished installing, uh, generating the new app with the new command. So I'm going to see the into it. And I'm going to type uh, Rails S for server. And we're going to go into, and just to point this out, I'm not sure what's causing this message because of Windows 10. Uh, I'm going to have to look into it. Uh, it might not be a big deal, and it might be a really big deal. Uh, let me go to localhost 3000. And here we go. We have Rails running. Now, here's an interesting question for you. Let me stop the server. How do we find this file? Uh, if you actually search for it, you're not going to find it anywhere. There's a setting you have to do in the control panel in order to find this. So we're going to go control panel. Make sure that this doesn't say category. It's in large icons so we can get to this quickly. Hit file explorer options view and we need to uncheck two things. Uh, show hidden files, folders and drive. And Hide protected operating system files. Hit yes, hit apply. And then here exactly is what we're looking for. We're going to go into this PC, local C drive, go to users, go to your user profile, go to app data, go to local, go to LXSS. Here's the bash. Here's the home directory that's listed over here. There's Farish, and there's my app. And that's it. We now have Ruby on Rails running on Windows 10. Uh, hope this is helpful for you. Uh, it's a long process, unfortunately. There's nothing we can do about it, but it's better than where we were before this came about. Setting up Ruby on Rails on Windows 7, Windows 8.1 is a nightmare. This is a big jump. And uh, anything Microsoft can do to improve their operating system to be a better development environment is good for all of us because it gives us more choices. All right. Have a good one.